I guess you guys already know about that. Uh, today we're talking about blockchains, and uh, yeah, let's let's just begin. Uh, my Zoom chat is open in case anyone has any questions, but I suggest for some time that be quick. All right, so uh, let's begin. Uh, the so uh, in yeah, so uh, in I think two thousand twelve or thirteen, uh, Bitcoin was undergoing a crisis, right? And everyone was was scared that uh, everyone who was investing in Bitcoin was scared that they are going to lose their market leverage, which was that they're going to lose their money. So one guy famously said uh, on the forum that I'm going going to be hodling, which he meant is holding. And from then on, it's become a trend to just replace the L and the D. So how to build the world is basically a way of saying uh, how to build the world. But in the decentralized uh, world, this is how we refer to everything, right? So before uh, I even start with anything, uh, you guys can see my screen, right? Yeah. So uh, just let me know if you can't see how to build the world. Okay, cool. So in the world, in the decentralized uh, world, there is something called as uh, you know a Web three based browser. So Web three means the third wave of uh, you know uh, internet. So the first wave of internet was when you had static content, right? So when you had to update every anything in the uh, website, you had to go through uh, editing the HTML part of it. Then came Web two, which was JSX at that time, which was JSX applet. Uh, sorry, uh, Java applet. I'm sorry. Uh, and then uh, it went on to become Node and you know Django and all of that. And now we are at Web three, which is decentralized. Now I'm, I'm going to be in this seminar. I'm going to be going over what a decentralized network is, what blockchain is, what Bitcoin, Ethereum, all of these things mean. But before we even get there, I just want to let you know that you cannot uh, serve the decentralized internet without uh, a wallet. So a wallet is where you store your uh, cryptocurrency. Now this cute little fox here uh, is the logo for MetaMask, and I'm on the main Ethereum network, so this is an Ethereum wallet. Uh, but yeah, it's enough for most decentralized networks. So uh, I'll just shift. Them. So now most of the uh, networks are, most of the websites are uh, not that uh, famous. Uh, example of a website would be sent. Uh, .co. That's the name. So sent is a Twitter kind of. Twitter, Facebook kind of website that is decentralized. So we'll get back to this in a second. Uh, let's first talk about what blockchain is and everything, how to you know, develop a blockchain. So, yeah. Sorry. So uh, it's divided into four parts. What is blockchain? How do you develop a blockchain? What do you need in a blockchain infrastructure? And what does the future look like? Let's get started. So now there's a blockchain simple infographic. This one makes sense right now because uh, it's just some random graphics. But uh, this is how Bitcoin would work. So you would uh, send money that would create the block that would be broadcasted to the network. That that transaction would be added to the network. Uh, some cryptography happening over here added to chain, and you receive the money. Uh, so when I'm done with everything, I'll come back to this and then that'll make a lot of sense for you. So what is blockchain? Uh, now blockchain is looked upon as this uh, new era of internet. In fact, I'd go ahead to say that, uh, I'll go ahead to say that after uh, Web 2.0, this is the biggest step that we are taking in terms of uh, innovating in the field of web development. And essentially what happens in a, uh, normal web 2.0 system is that you would have a client, you would have a server, and these two would communicate with each other, right? But in a web three, uh, that is not what happens. To participate in a network, you must be a part of the network, you must be one of the servers. And uh, that is because in a client server model, what happens is, uh, so let's say we have this client server architecture. What's happening over here is, uh, What's happening over here is that uh, this uh, server is the center. So let's say this is Facebook, and these are all four of, you know, let's say it's Abhinav, uh, Tanish, Renmaya, and Pooja. 
So it's four of us, right? And uh, how would we communicate is we would send all our data to the server and uh, the server would send the data back to us. And that is basically how the communication occurs. Now in our decentralized architecture, that is not the case. In a decentralized architecture, you've got, um, one second, uh, room thing, how do I? In a decentralized architecture, uh, things go a little bit different. Centralized, may, what happens is there is a central server. In a distributed, they, there is a form of centralization. Uh, th there is no form of centralization at all. But in a decentralized network, all of the nodes, uh, ignore these extra nodes at the sides, you know, uh, just focus on these nodes. All of them are connected to each other. Right? In a distributed network, to for this node to be connected to this node, it would have to go to another node. But in a de decentralized network, that is not the case. So, uh, controls. So, uh, what is blockchain? A blockchain is essentially a network of computers, all of which have the same history of transactions. There is no central server on which the database is stored. The database is shared amongst all the participating nodes in the network. Uh, if this is clear, uh, we move on. If you have any doubt, Zoom chat is open. Anyway, uh, so what, what's the example of a decentralized app? Uh, there are a ton from Bitcoin, Ethereum, uh, which is in the DeFi or decentralized finances world. To supply chain apps. Uh, so one funny thing is a lot of people think that you know blockchain is going to be being adopted by uh, industry industry, but Facebook has Libra and Facebook is going to push Libra hard. Libra is one of those things which is it's it's kind of like a digital currency, uh, like like Bitcoin, but Bitcoin is not stable. Libra wants to be stable, and Libra will be, be used as a currency inside of Facebook. Ethereum will be used as a currency inside of Reddit. If you are on Reddit you know that uh, you can give rewards to people that will be done via ethereum after a while uh, because the thing with cryptocurrencies are you can exchange them for value cryptocurrencies hold hold value uh, it's like burger king russia okay so burger king russia has a really interesting uh, idea what uh, uh, sure if, if you uh, if anyone joined in late i'll uh, I can't really explain it right now. We have we have certain time limitations. I'll just explain it at the end. That's fine. Uh, right now, just focus on the applications because that's the part we're on. So anyway, examples of decentralized applications would be Bitcoin, Ethereum. Uh, now, Burger King has a uh, Burger King Russia has something called as Whopper Coin. So what? It's, I think it's Whopper Coin. So I'll call it Whopper Coin. It sounds better. So what Whopper Coin is that whenever you go to Burger King and you spend a certain amount, uh, I think seventeen hundred rubles and Burger King. You get one group of coin. Now, you see these kind of exchange systems at a lot of marts, right? Like you go to uh, Lifestyle, if you, I think you get some Lifestyle coupon or some Lifestyle points uh, or uh, at Pantaloons or whatever. Uh, but the thing is, it can only be used at other Pantaloons stores or that Pantaloons stores. With Whoopa coin, you can actually take it to the exchange and uh, change it for some, you know, currency. Or if that is not something that you want to do, you can sell that off to some other person. So that's an advantage to move account. Now, uh, there's also decentralized social media like Scent. I use something called as Gitcoin, which is like a decentralized GitHub. And I'll get to that at the end of this. So uh, why should you bother learning uh, blockchains in the first place? One of the tendencies of human is to use uh, uncertainty right and uncertainty is caused when you are on a web 2.0 that all right suppose you are posting something controversial on twitter twitter will remove it if it's homophobic if it's you know something if it's a, if it's in a sense not appropriate twitter will remove it but in the using the same algorithm twitter and youtube uh, attack a lot of in a considerably innocent content right uh, that tampering of data is something that only authorities can do, only centralized servers can do. You cannot do that on a blockchain because blockchains are tamper proof. Why they tamper proof is that the database is on all the networks. So if you are on one of the nodes which deletes the data, 
what would happen is that automatically the data would be downloaded on your system again. You cannot tamper with blockchain data, right? And uh, you can actually do it. You have to do a 51% attack. So there is a famous Silicon Valley scene of 51% attack. If you guys have seen it, uh, I suggest you guys uh, give it a go. And uh, it will be hard at first to understand, but they explain it really well as well in there. So if you own 51, if one authority owns 51% of the nodes, they can change the data. Uh, so it's blockchain the new kid in town. Not really. Uh, blockchains as such are a form of distributed system. So our client server architecture. Uh, blockchains were, blockchain is just a protocol. It's not really, uh, it's not Bitcoin, it's not Ethereum, it's just a protocol. It's a communication protocol. So in, uh, if you use AWS Cassandra, uh, I think it's Cassandra, what Cassandra does is, uh, they use something called as uh, DHTs, which is distributed hash tables. So your uh, databases will be stored in different, uh, you know, servers. And whenever you have to uh, fetch them, you would basically use a hash table. Now this is not exactly a blockchain, but but it is a distributed network of sorts, and that is kind of the primer. That is what lays the basis for a blockchain network. So this is centralized architecture. I've already talked about this. Uh, this is a centralized architecture. Uh, I've already talked about this. There will be a server, there'll be an the, the cloud, which will be your HTTP, MQTT, whatever protocol that you're using. And there'll be your clients. In the blockchain, the server will be replaced by a network. You still have like, obviously you can't download an 80 GB node on your system because you will download all the transactions if you're participating. So you use a remote procedural call, which is basically connecting to the blockchain via an API. Uh, as a, I mean, blockchain is just a chain of blocks. It's not really that complicated. It's a linked list of sorts, but uh, in a linked list, all of the data are separated from each other. You'll hear this a lot. A blockchain is just a fancy link. That is usually said by people who are not very good at, like they don't really know blockchain. Linked lists have isolated data instances. I mean, one, one, uh, what do you call it? One uh, block of a linked list will have certain amount of data. The next block won't. The blockchain has all the data. Like every node in the blockchain has all the data. The entire network, the chain, the chain of blocks. Every block will be stored in all the nodes. That's the difference. I hope I'm clear. So let's look at one of the blocks. Uh, now, uh, in a blockchain on a node, data is kind of stored like how you would store a, a database, a normal database. But the, it's kind of different in the sense that uh, the blocks, the architecture of the block is not the same as that you would have for data. So there's something known as smart contracts, which I'll get to after this slide, uh, which enforce this model of sorts, right? If you've done Django, you know what models are, and uh, they're kind of the same thing here and there, right? So <clears throat> a block will have data, hash, and a hash of previous data. And uh, inside of a block's data, it depends on the blockchain. I mean, look at the Bitcoin block. It'll have version, flag, uh, a list of other technical metadata, the size and all of that, but this is not the same for Ethereum. Ethereum works slightly differently. You'll know when you start doing it. Anyway, so what's a hash? Uh, I mentioned hash over here, right? A hash is basically like a fingerprint, all right? So uh, what happens is that every block has a hash. Now this hash is not decided by, I'll uh, go over to our online cryptography website that does online crypto. Uh, Cypher, yeah, okay. So I'll go with a, I want a 250, SHA 256. Why did I just search for that? So I'll show you an example of how uh, hashes are built, right? And this is a really, really interesting part. So now suppose one of the blog stores a data that says, hi, I am Abhinav. 
look at this zero uh, five five this big number that you see this is the hash of a block that says hi i'm abhinav but a block will not only have the data it will also have the hash of the previous block so that entire uh, block will be hashed using sh256 so one of the best parts about sh256 is that it has a constant length so and uh, to like you can verify that this both of these mean the same things so it's kind of effective right uh, but hi if i go to hi am abhinav and if i just add another space the entire thing changes if i remove v it changes if i say hi i am tanish it looks like this welcome to c4 so as you can see the hash has changed now what this means for the uh, for the chain is that if you tamper with any one of suppose this was originally the chain right suppose this was the chain if you tamper suppose this was the original chain now suppose i change something in this uh, it's going i i change something in this block right so uh, the entire sorry I'll ch i change something in this block so the entire chain is broken a new chain emerges from the previous chain now this chain will be something called as a side chain and your main chain from here you have the main chain that will be safe this will be the tampered chain and what happens is that these nodes will be malicious we already know that they won't have to face a punishment that because that is not for how bitcoin operates that is how ethereum operates the uh, states these chains will just re download the data from the main chain now side side chain networks are formed and a lot of uh, a lot of other networks like matic and cosmos have their own ways of combating it but side chains are a huge problem in uh, bitcoin so uh so now we have hashing and the fact that data is stored on all the databases but does that make uh, the the network safe right because uh, i can add anything to the block i can just do a write a script that keeps adding to the block and if i keep adding to the block eventually i'll run into something known as denial of service which is basically if i load overload the network to the point where every node is bloated and they have no more space left you know where proof of work comes now proof of work was originally if uh, you go back to when most of us were born which is like 98 1990000 at that point to send a mail a lot of email uh, addresses had something known as uh, a proof of work what you needed to do was basically give a solution to a problem to make sure that you are not spam you are not spamming anyone now that is the exact same thing in blockchain but uh, proof of work in blockchain bitcoin works a little differently is that you will be given a mathematical task which will be basically a hash and you will have to basically uh, inverse the hash or decode the hash so to say now the best thing about decoding a hash is that it is an np time uh, problem you know non polynomial time now non polynomial time uh, problems can you can never figure out how much time it will take for you right but you can always verify it in polynomial time so verifying it is easy decoding it is hard now what happens to the people after you know the main blockchain network well uh, in some hard forks of bitcoin like bitcash and all those side chains are uh, not rewarded but bitcoin i think rewards to certain extent i don't really work with bitcoin i work mostly with ethereum uh, but i think bitcoin is a fair basis of what most modern blockchains are anyway so a uh, bitcoin uh, rewards uh, a part of the main reward to the miner who came second but the main miner gets something known as a reward that reward is for solving or inversing a hash inversing a hash make sure that the block is verified it is not spam and it can be added to the network so now we have all the data is stored on every network participating in the nodes different from a, that is that is not how uh client server models or your normal facebook work facebook and all have a centralized server we don't have a centralized server database is stored on all the nodes but in case of um, uh and the next sorry i didn't more said yeah i forgot the second point uh what 
there's tamper proofing in the form of uh, hashing. So every data is hashed and these hashes kind of form a cryptographic link. So when I say linked list, in a linked list you have pointer that points to the next block. In a blockchain that pointing is done via cryptography. Like that pointer, it will not be a pointer, it will be a cryptographic hash. So only if the two hashes match, you can pass it off. Now, there's a guy, if you want to actually get into depth of it, uh, there's a guy named Sabji. Uh, Sabji simply explained. He wrote a, he has a video series on how to make a blockchain from scratch in JavaScript. Uh, I'll put it in the chats right now. Check that out. It's like one of the best, like it got me started. Anyway, coming to the last part, which is uh, proof of work. We have tamper proofing by a, uh, a decentralized network, database stored on all the nodes. We have hashing, which is a cryptographic link between two blocks. We have proof of work. Proof of work is nothing but an anti spanning technology. Now there's proof of stake in Ethereum, which is basically you need to have some ether to, you know, uh, it's a stake. You need to have some stake in the chain, which is the Ethereum, that will be a form of money. So now let's look at the use case of uh, blockchain. So now let's look at the use cases of blockchain and I should go for a screen. Uh, so uh, if you have any doubts about how blockchain works at all, anything, uh, please go ahead and ask me. I'll talk about do you need blockchain use cases and then I'll shift to uh, developing and that will be a total 10 minutes. So if you have any doubts, please do ask. <coughs> All right, I guess you guys don't have doubts. So let's move on. Do you need blockchain? Now, uh, yes. Next. Uh, Ambarishan, can you not text me privately, please? I, just text me in the group, uh, like text on the main channel so that everyone gets the answer. Ambarishan asks, what technologies do you use? And he yeah, answer that. So, uh, <laughs> As I said, people think blockchain is like five, six years into the future. Blockchain is not, you cannot change it. It's there. It's like major companies are using blockchain. Amazon, Walmart, now. If you've heard of the shipping company Mars, M A E R S K, I don't know how to pronounce it. I think it's a Finnish name. That, that they are using it. M O L, which is Mitsui or SK Line, they are using it. My dad works in that industry, so I get a little bit insight. Anyway, what's the love? Which is like an engineering company engine development, they, they're using it. So it's like pretty much out there, all the billion dollar industry. Anyway, so, but the question is, do you need blockchain? Now blockchain to me is divided into three different aspects, right? The three different aspects are cryptocurrencies, public blockchain and private blockchain. Now I did not talk about public or private blockchains right now, because uh, that's like a concept for later, but to put it, uh, to make it easy, in a public blockchain, anyone can be a node across the world as long as they have internet access. In a private blockchain, not so much. You need to have a certificate from your organization to become a part of the uh, private blockchain. That certification is provided by someone called as MSP or uh, Membership Service Provider. In my mind, I'm thinking something like that. entirely different about MSP. Anyway. So uh, do you need blockchain? The answer is probably you do, right? Uh, do you have a lack of trust between two parties? Now, the entire premise of blockchain is trustlessness. Do you trust a central server? Do you trust Twitter to not delete your tweet, right? If you don't trust it, decentralize it. That's like, a, you can form a nice you know, binary tree from it, whether you need it or not. But uh, the basic of it is, if there is a lack of trust between two organizations, uh, go ahead and uh, decentralize the network. Now, also, if you if you are buying a server, right? What happens when you buy a server is that you usually pay your uh, host, which is uh, say AWS or Azure, you pay a certain amount to them, and they give you a virtual machine on their system somewhere in Siberia. That is not the case here the brunt of your infrastructural cost will be bought by the people who are running the network. Of course, if you want to deploy your contract, which is the 
back end of the code to the chain you will have to pay some amount because that or your that is what the basic of proof of stake is if you are adding any block your back end is a block in the network that's it if you are adding any block to the network you have to pay some amount for it right uh but that amount is usually uh i mean what is my i trans i did a block transfer some days ago and i i had uh, okay i did from a different account anyway what happened is that i had to pay 0.001 ethereum or something and i just asked the community for it and they were kind enough uh i mean it's a really really small amount compared to what you have to pay for in aws now uh so the interest you can reduce your infrastructure cost you have trustlessness issues decentralized man like it's it's way easier to have a decentralized network honestly i prefer i would decentralize everything if i could purely on the basis of how secure and easy it is to have a decentralized network anyway so but again again you should not decentralize everything uh If you are happy with your content, or uh, if you are happy with your website, do not decentralize. You don't need to have a decentralized uh, e-commerce website, even though a lot of people believe you do. Sure, in some cases it's profitable, or you don't need to have a decentralized Spotify, but in some cases you do. Uh, in cases of user rights and all, so yeah, in some cases you do, some cases you don't. Uh, I have written a blog about it, and I'll put it here. I run a magazine. I kind of edit a magazine called the Crypto Element. have written down there so anyway yeah getting back to the topic use cases agriculture healthcare government journalism finance supply chain and much more and this much more i've written so that i can fit it into a stream that's huge list of uh places that can actually use blockchain uh anyway uh that's not from that's not all from my side i also have to talk about how to develop now there's a lot of networks out there uh the most famous one right now is ethereum right but ethereum has a problem ethereum was supposed to use proof of stake but they still rely on uh, proof of work now proof of work is fine proof of work works but it's slow it takes 10 minutes to mine a block so how would you develop uh, in case of you know how would you develop for a how would you develop a decentralized network well uh there are two ways for a public blockchain you can use ethereum if ethereum is not fast enough for you go with matic.network matic is ethereum but <laughs> matic is ethereum but they are faster and they use uh, if i go down the there uh they use the same smart contract language or the backend language that my, uh, ethereum uses but uh, they use a few techniques which makes them faster that te those techniques are not using proof of work using proof of stake and other such uh, scalable solutions now i really like the matic yeah i really like the matic home page anyway this is it uh, sorry ethereum home page you can go to ethereum.org now how to develop for ethereum uh, would be to use solidity and uh, you know how you have local host on your system right uh, matic has some sorry it has something simple sim similar and i just add another uh, add my powershell uh, is my powershell visible to you guys just raise a hand if it is oh guys okay so uh, i'll do a ganache dot ganache let me try ganache cli so what happens is that i get a local blockchain with 10 networks so what happens in these 10 networks so let me just take a private key of one of the networks so you will have a public and a private key this will be your login this will be your password of sorts i'm just paraphrasing that is not exactly how it works and this is a local ethereum network where you have 100 ethers on your network so uh, i'll just shift back to my i'm back on my chrome i hope you guys can see that now this is uh, i just expand this how do i so this is metamask now metamask is what you use to search for decentralized public blockchain network uh so let me just import an account from my ganache 
CLI that I had. Uh, sometimes spaces are a problem. Uh, one second, guys. I didn't copy it correctly. Yeah. So now you can see that uh, there are a ton of Ethereum networks, right? Now these Ethereum networks uh, are basically, you know, Robston is a test network, which is not the main Ethereum network. So you can get fake Ethereum to actually test your network. Like you have local host, right? Where you test your, uh, you know, web dev stuff. You have Robston, you have Coban, all of these are test networks. Uh, for me personally, I really like Robston, but some people prefer the other three. I don't know who prefers the other three, but I'm assuming some people do. Sorry. So I shifted on my local host 8545. This is where my blockchain, local blockchain is running. I have 10 different nodes on this blockchain. All of the nodes have 100 ether in them. This is not actual ether, so don't get too excited. Anyway, so yeah, th this is what a local blockchain looks like. I'll have 100 ether. Now I'll write something known as a smart contract. So what is a smart contract you might ask, right? Uh, now I can use a lot of you know smart terminology for that. In fact, I won't Google it. I'll just give you my definition of it. A smart contract is basically it's kind of a backend, but it's also not a backend. It's a ton of it's a it's a set of rules essentially, which tell you how to run your blockchain network. So I'll just show you a wait a second. I'll just show you my uh, where did it go? Right here. So this is one of my solidity solutions uh, for a supply chain network that I'm writing. This is a public blockchain. Network. Now, if I, I can't zoom in. Yeah, so if you can see it, is it clear? Uh, Ambarishan, can you see it? Okay. Chat five. Bit lag visible. Okay. Yeah. Uh, also, yeah, so Ambarish, I'm answering your question about what uh, language do we use. I'm sorry, my Zoom chat was closed, so I thought nobody could see it. Anyway, uh, so we use something called a Solidity. And uh, Solidity is basically a smart contract writing language, defining language, not a writing. It's basically where you, it, it looks a lot like C++. It's where you define the rules for what your backend will look like or what a block of data would look like. Now, Bitcoin is very, very, conservative in the sense that they are very afraid of a DOS network, DOS uh, attack. So they use something called as blockchain script, which is scary as it, it's very scary. Ethereum uses solidity. Solidity is Turing complete, which means it has control structures. You've got if else statements, you can use that. Uh, this is like the initial solidity code that I've written. It basically is for a delivery solidity contract. A structure would look something like, you know, you'll have contracts when you do NPM in it, uh, sorry, truffle in it. Truffle is what you use. It's like the framework that you use for developing your Ethereum applications. Now, Hyperledger works completely differently. It uses Docker. You have to set up your Docker and then you can write in Golang or uh, I think Java, JavaScript as well. I'm not sure about Hyper. I've only written Hyperledger code in Golang till now. So, uh, it has other solutions by the way. Now, uh, this is what uh, you your deploy contract would look like. So this, when you do truffle compile, what you basically, do, uh, my code is not complete, so it will not compile right now. So what it will do is it will basically compile, so to say, into something known as ABIs, which is your build, right? And this will be like a JSON format of what your, uh, this code gives a lot of pop-ups. Anyway, ABI is kind of like an applic application blockchain interface. It will interface your RPC, your uh, you know Web3 with the blockchain network. So uh, right now it's not complete, so it's not even showing the correct ABI. But when it will be complete, it will show the correct ABI. And then you will type in truffle migrate. You just check if your truffle is on the correct local correct port which if you remember we are running on 8545 then you press up and migrate it'll transfer it to truffle and uh, shift it back to chrome 
and you'll have your cute little you know truffle uh, you'll have a cute little smart contract deployed on the network now what do you do when you have to what do you do when you have to make a front end for it the making the front end for it uh, i have a few front end developers in the audience right now it's the same you use react but uh, you use something called as web3 which is like a rpc protocol it will basically interface with your blockchain now this is the final 5 10 minutes of the session uh, so i'll just go over what truffle web3 is and we'll be done for the js and truffle box so if you want to develop your first application go to truffle box truffle suite dot com slash boxes pick one of the box now this box is kind of like it will bootstrap it will scaffold your entire project for you it will give you a template uh kind of like what a cms system does if you don't know what cms is log in again one in one of the five days i'll be talking about cm content management systems there will be a lot of fun anyway web3js uh if you go to web3js uh it's basically an rpc protocol that lets you connect to your local or remote ethereum node using http or ipc which is i think internet procedure inter procedural call i'm not sure about I, I, ipc but all of these are basically rpcs okay rpcs are what you use to connect to anything remote if you use, if you have connected to a server you have ssh into a server you are using rpcs anyway so you got react box it will have everything that you need download it downloading it is easy you do npx truffle unbox react you install everything you start you just do the normal whatever you do with react and you're done and you'll have your network ready so that was all from my side about ethereum about truffle about bitcoin about ethereum about a lot of other things that we talked about we talked about the basics of blockchain the use cases the languages we used to develop which is again numbers and solidity go lang solidity solidity for ethereum clarity for blockstack solidity for uh, matic go lang python for uh, java for hyperledger same three for cosmos as well which is like a public private kind of blockchain very interesting technology you got iroha iroha i haven't honestly developed much in but from what i've heard you can code in i think go lang i'm not sure they use chain code which is the same as a uh, smart contract which is it's a back end for your code in a sense it basically and establishes what can and cannot be published to the network so that's all from my side open to any questions uh, you can come to the chat and ask me questions if you want or you can just turn on your mics and ask me your questions i am stopping my uh yeah i'll start my share and you can ask your questions guys uh does no one have any question yes then we'll wrap it up all right we'll wrap up in another 2 minutes how do you think blockchain architecture will affect ai development so i'm surprised nobody asked this question this is like one of my pet projects right now singularity net 
this is probably one of the coolest names you can ever give to any project like ever singularity net is like this distributed decentralized uh, network of you know ai network as they like to call it i think it's by microsoft but i'm not 110% sure so let's anyone create uh, share and monetize ai services at scale uh we can talk more about this it's it's pretty lengthy it took me a long time to understand myself but you can basically uh you can do a lot of things you can uh, give out your uh system for training or something like that also uh since we are on the topic of you know it ai and uh, decentralization i want to first point out that uh decentralization will not affect ai development directly but decentralization will lead to a lot of uh, you know networks where you cannot tamper with the data like on twitter like on twitter you can ta- tamper but on send you can't tra- tamper there's also steam at or if you're from vit you might have heard of lbry lbry does something similar so you cannot tamper with the data so now we need ai that will basically correct uh, or basically look at what you need uh, to oh wait i'm not sharing my screen shit sorry uh, what you uh, ai uh, what ai will need to come in the come in the middle and you know talk about uh, is this information correct in the first place i i think it will affect ai will affect smart contracts a lot i think it's going to be the off or the way around instead of but decentralized networks will uh, speed up AI, you know training and other things like that because a decentralized network is like a huge turing machine i mean no system is actually a turing machine it's a theoretical model but there is a degree of turing ness right so your laptop is less turing than the bitcoin network which is like a ton of different machines connected together so anyway that's i think it will speed it up uh, not affect it directly but i think ai will affect blockchain more so anyway yeah that's i uh, uh all right cool then i guess that's it uh i guess someone else has a question uh if god will private let me just check Yeah, someone sent me a text on private. Can you just send it to me on the main group? Oh, wait. Can't see the question. yeah uh how will blockchain affect social media one second yeah so basically uh social uh, i hope my screen sharing is on so social media is kind of going to be affected by blockchain uh same way as web 2.0 uh, affected web 3.0 sorry uh, affected uh, social media as back then your data will be a lot more secure with blockchain because everyone has access to your data but they cannot it will be hashed nobody has access to your data by itself right 
uh, even the miner can only mine a computational problem they cannot solve a uh, they cannot solve a computational impossibility and somehow get access to your data it is known that some facebook sells data via cambridge analytica and stuff like that blockchains may yet you won't have this problem democracy will be in the purest form blockchain is a digital form of democracy you've got send.net network you've got steemit you've got lbry there are a ton of other networks i promised to talk to you about gitcoin gitcoin is like what the future is i mean i don't you have to check gitcoin out this is what happens when you put a bunch of crazy people in the same room they come up with gitcoin github there you have no advantage of solving an issue on gitcoin you do you get funded right that's insane anyway so that's about how uh pooja has asked me on private that how will quantum computing affect our blockchain can can you just put it on our main so that everyone knows okay so what what happens is quantum computing uh, will not affect blockchain as such because i think ethereum at some point use something called as uh, elliptical cryptography L uh, circuit ecc i i forgot to put on ecc someone who's taken cyber security will know yeah elliptical i forgot the full form of it elliptic curve cryptography so what happens is basically uh, i'm i i'm not sure if i'm right with this i'm not a cryptography expert but what happens is you've got your uh, main value uh, your i'm not really sure so you you your function so your private key will basically be a function of your public key and this will be the line of the equation and uh, yeah that's on the surface what it is i mean yeah that's on the surface what it is but with the new ethereum releases this is not a problem public and private keys the relation between them could potentially damage this was invertible using quantum computing uh eccs are not quantum safe because quantum computing can use grover algorithm or shor's algorithm to basically reverse this entire process but you cannot do that anymore we have now post quantum safe uh cryptography methods so yeah it's pretty safe i mean rules of crypto rules of classical computing only applies to classical computing quantum computing theory of quantum computation deals with something entirely different so yeah uh that's it i guess uh, no i'm not getting any more questions i think that's that's all the questions we have uh let's wrap up Okay, I think that's all the questions from Pooja. Uh, okay, Bossman said it. All right, uh, we're wrapping up. Thanks for joining, and uh, yeah, I guess I'll uh, leave the meeting now. And, uh, it's fun talking to you guys. Some great questions. If you have any doubts, my number is uh, here. Text me. This is my email ID. This is my website. Access me anywhere. Yeah. That's all. Uh, nice talking to you guys. See you soon.